Most understand that the construction of the Panama Canal was necessary to significantly reduce the travel time of going around the tip of South America. While that is true, there are also much more treacherous and nefarious reasons why navigators wanted to explore the long way round. Today we'll learn more about one of the most dangerous and infamous straits that exists in the world, a rite of passage for some of the most renowned explorers, adventurers, and scientists humanity has produced, and a region ordinary mariners and commercial ships avoid at all costs, the Drake Passage. First things first, where is the Drake Passage? And if it's so dangerous, why would anyone go there? The Drake Passage is the name for the body of water that spans the 620-mile gap between Cape Horn, Chile, and Antarctica. The Drake Passage is the point of convergence of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, the two biggest bodies of water in the world, as well as the Southern Ocean. The average depth of the strait is 3,400 meters, or 11,150 feet deep, though at its southern and northernmost ends, the depths can reach up to 4,800 meters, 15,700 feet deep. As for the name, Drake's Passage, how did that come about? The story is wrapped up in the first wave of colonization and the struggles between the Spanish and early British empires. The strait's name comes from Francis Drake, perhaps the most well-known seaman of the Elizabethan age. Born in England between 1540 and 1543, Drake spent his whole life around boats. By the time he was 18, Drake was already well on his way to becoming a sea dog, a pirate sanctioned by the British crown, looting and plundering villages, and waging war against any Spanish ships he ran into. By his 30s, Drake's resume, violent though it was, fit the bill for British interests in South America, and he was chosen as the leader of an expedition aiming to pass around South America via the extremely dangerous Strait of Magellan. This was in 1577, and the mission aimed to carve a path for British interests in the region. Drake set sail in December of that year with five small ships manned by about 200 men. After several challenges, Drake's fleet entered the Strait of Magellan in August 1578. A storm of gale-force winds seized the expedition of ships, separating them all. One of them, presuming Drake to be lost and dead, returned to England, another was lost altogether, probably into the Drake Passage itself. It was around this time that Drake supposed there might be, just below the Strait of Magellan, a meeting point of the world's great oceans beneath the tip of South America. Though the passage is named after him, he never crossed it. It was in 1526, decades earlier, that the Drake Passage was first spotted by the Spanish colonist and explorer Francisco de Hawks, though it's unclear whether he braved the passage at the time. Still today in the Latin American world, the sea is also referred to as the Mar de Hawks, in memory of this first sighting. The first person in recorded history to actually cross the Drake Passage was Dutch explorer Willem Scouten, 40 years after Drake's chaotic expedition. At this point, you might be wondering, but why is the Drake Passage so dangerous? What is it about this meeting point of oceans that makes it so unpredictable, so notorious for mariners, explorers, and scientists? As the convergence point of the colder, northward-flowing Antarctic waters and the warmer, southward-flowing waters of the Atlantic and the Pacific, an enormous amount of water flows through the Drake Passage, about 125 to 200 million cubic yards per second. There is no doubt whatsoever. The waters in the Drake Passage flow as the most voluminous current in the world, called the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, or ACC, which mostly flows east to northeast, with a small portion branching off northwest into the South Atlantic, called the Falklands Current. In the ACC, the three major oceans exchange heat, salinity, and nutrients from the far reaches of the globe. This makes the ACC a key player in the regulation of both the flow and temperature of what is called the global conveyor belt. According to the mythology of the Drake Passage, the waters have two states, called respectively the Drake Lake and the Drake Shake. The first refers to times in which the waters are very calm and placid, resembling a lake almost without any waves. The second, and much more common state, occurs when the waves lift themselves to heights of up to 60 feet, or 18 meters high. The mean annual air temperatures across the Drake Passage range from 41 degrees Fahrenheit in the north to 27 degrees in the south, or 5 to minus 3 degrees Celsius, with the water temperatures ranging also from 43 degrees in the north to 30 degrees Fahrenheit in the south. As you can probably imagine, crossing, or even attempting to skirt the Drake Passage, 
is not for the faint of heart. But of course, there have been plenty who have tried. In our next segment, we'll delve into the spectacular achievements, awe-inspiring feats, and tragic defeats that have taken place in the Drake Passage. Stay tuned for more on this treacherous yet fascinating part of the world.